Originating from Wuhan, China, COVID-19, a virus in the corona family of viruses has havoc the continent with high cases of transmission and deaths. More than 10,000 people have now died and in More it. than 3,800 deaths. More than 97,000 deaths in the US right now. 118,000 cases globally. So far, nearly half a million deaths have been officially recorded around the world. 8,942 cases. The world economy and other activities have gone to a standstill after the global effect of coronavirus. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. 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 The Ministry of Health has confirmed the first coronavirus case in Kenya. Kenyans must treat this matter with the seriousness it deserves by, ad by adjusting and changing their lifestyles. If we continue to behave normally, this disease will treat us abnormally. With the rise of coronavirus cases in our country, a great concern comes as to how the people, especially in the slum region, are responding to this pandemic. Now, the government has continually emphasized on the need for everyone to observe social distancing, wear a face mask, and sanitize or wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. The question is, are these government regulations observed? Now, walk with me as I go to Kibera Slum to be able to engage with them and see how they are coping with this pandemic. Kwanza hii side yetu hiyo social distancing sema kweli haijachukuliwa serious sana. Kwanza hata sasa hivi hata venye tuko hapa chiki venye watu wanatembea kwa kimoja ma mask pia wengine hawana. Wengine hata tuko nao na tumevalia tu hapa chini chini. Hata kwanza tu provide na hizo ma mask tuletee. Maji maji kwanza maji hakuna. Sema wala kama watafute maji ndio ipate. When we came here for the first time, most people were not able, were not ready to wash their hands. Some were even talking, using abusive words towards us because when we were going to take a chakula, we were expect maybe one an hour, not to be a wonga maybe to carry on. With that said, the practicality of the said government regulations in reference to health and the reality of the residents living in this second largest slum in the continent is compromising. These two accounts represent an overall picture of what we saw coming to Kibera. We take a step further by taking you into the households of the most vulnerable families. <laughs> Mi ni mzaleo wa Kisumu, lakini naishi hapa katwekera, kibira, ni kona watoto watatu. Wale nilikuwa nategemea, ni wale wameandikuwa kazi wanakuja wakipitia wakinunua. Saiu, wote wamesumamishu wa kazi, sasa ni ngumu, biyashari imekuwa ngumu, hata hile pesa nikuwa napata kama 150, saiu hata suwezi fikisha 150, nikipata mingi ni 50 na hitoshi. Uyu kumajina naituwa Gravin Utieno, akona miaka sita, hamisha kuwa na problem mingi. Shida mbae ni akonayo ni shida ya kuongea, hawezi kula, na hawezi tembea, hamisha kuwa na ishu mingi, but saizi nezaona at least, ako beta, juu, ata macho ilikuwa iyoni, but now wanaezaona, sasa we thank God for that. Sasa ni vile sasa kwa sasa saizi, hamerudi nyuma tena, juu ni mutu menye uwa wanapelekwa mazoezi, juu saizi kila kitu imefungwa, hakuna vile aneza ajisaidia. Sasa ni kushinda kukaa kwa nyumba, hakuna exercise yote janeza fanyua. 
Sasa sisi pia tumekaa tuna eh tunajaribu kama binadamu lakini ile exercise nilikuwa napata hatuwezi mfanyia. Mm. Na wajua kila siku watoto wanahitaji at least kilishe. Eh wapate at least breakfast, lunch na supper you cannot deny them. So uh, problem kubwa sana ni getting enough uh, items in terms of food kwa sustain ya yeah, manake sio rahisi si changamoto kupata pesa sasa hizi sio rahisi it's too hard for now cuz since the corona came i was working but for now i don't have any job i have to depend on friends and relatives it's by grace of the lord because i can just be sitting here and i get a call come and take food somewhere that's how we are getting food yeah and if i go there to the road there there are some women who are selling the vegetables i can go there and take on credit and if i get the money i go and pay it has really lowered my self esteem and my life because i was to finish school at least when my child reaches 2 months i start to hustle but now things are just falling apart yeah According to the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection, more than 1.2 million people have lost their job due to COVID pandemic. This means 1.2 million people are at home, 1 million being from the informal sector. How best are they prepared or equipped to face this pandemic? The government has done uh, quite uh, much. We identified people who received money from the government to, for sustenance, about uh, around 9,500 people. We have our system up to the grassroots through the assistant count commissioners, the chiefs, assistant chiefs, the village elders, the cluster chairman, and their mobile numbers. Sioni kama wamefanya nafu. Sababu especially wanaposema to stock nje na wacha provide something. Si hapo naona hawajafanya nafu so mimi naona kitu present wetu angefanya. In fact kwa wale watu wako na kitambulisho ID. Kila mtu angepewa 10,000. Wala wana ID ambaye sasa tunaita ni watoto wapewe 5,000 kila chami. So sasa useme Nimefungwa kutoka inje, tumia hizo pesa mpaka tuona kama tutako kontroli huu wangu. Lakini ukisema watu wengine ndani nocha wapatia kitu, not enough. Even if the people have their problems, uh, lack of money uh, for essential services like uh, buying food, uh, paying their rent, paying uh, hospital bills, uh, but what is so fundamental is food. Because uh, I am realizing there are people who are going hungry. They're, most of them are coming here seeking for that support. Yeah. So uh, let more organizations come in and uh, do the proper targeting to get those who have not been supported. ADRA Kenya, like most ADRA offices, has projects that span the continuum from relief to development activities. So in the relief area, we're responding to the natural, uh, even man-made disasters that occur in our country, whether it is uh, a flood uh, or a drought, period of drought. Right now we have the problem of the locusts, also COVID-19. Uh, so all of these occurrences provide opportunities for our ministry to make a difference to those communities that are caught up in these disasters. Mm -hmm. And from relief projects, we generally try to transition to development projects if we haven't been doing them already. And these uh, tackle issues such as uh, food insecurity. So we're looking at uh, agriculture or other uh, farming related uh, activities, uh, education, uh, whether it's uh, in the informal sector or uh, in 
more of the structured uh, educational responses, uh, health issues uh, like FGM responses and uh, fistula and other issues that we have here in Kenya. And uh, these projects are more community-based, uh, long-term if possible, uh, where we endeavor in partnership with our communities uh, to make a positive change. Another thing we have been able to do is to identify 300 most vulnerable households, people with uh, special needs, people who can have uh, movement barriers, some are physically challenged, some are, uh, others are sick in bed, bedridden, some are, uh, others have very many challenges. Kitu muhimu ya jabu, wale tupatia sanitizer nye tuwezi nunua, na tuwezi afford, na hiyo ndo kitu important size, yenye mtu wanafaa kukua na kwa nyumba. Hapo tulishukuru, tukapewa masabuni, tukapatiwa kitu ambaye nye za muhimu. Hiyo ndo kemana na suneza sema ni asante kwa watu kama hao. Juu unajua hata mtu wakikupea chakula na ukue mgonjwa. Bado ita kusaidia. Lakini ya kijaribu kukuzulia hile ugonjwa kwanza, ndio chakula ikuje ni sawa. We have a total of uh, 17 hand washing stations which are spread in 11 sites. So out of those 11 sites, we put them based on the traffic which we are having in those areas. Right now we are recording 40 to 41,000 people washing their hands on a daily, on a daily basis. Terminus, Olympic Terminus, currently is recording the highest with an average of 5,000 people washing their hands at that station. Ugonjwa huu wa corona imeingia Kenya, ilifikiriwa ya kwamba Mahali ambapo ita, itamaliza haraka ni kibira kwa sababu iko densely populated. Ndiyo sababu inanipea motisha ya kwamba nitawezaje kuzuia janga hili isipatikane kibira. Our greatest challenge has been water. Cuz sometimes maji napotea hapa, we have to hire na inakuwa expensive kidogo. So imekuwa tu ni maji peke yake. Ya hiyo mambo ya lunch break tulisema apana kwa sababu ugonjwa ama yule ambaye anaweza kuwa na hiyo shida ya corona tukiwa tumeenda lunch break anaweza kuwa amechomoka labda ama ama amepita wameenda kukutana na wengine na katika hiyo hali itakuwa imepata imepata wengine ya yeah. kazi yetu ni kuahimiza to keep to uh, keep distance sasa zile wanaona mikono na kuna mikono Ata wengine wanaweza kuuliza kwa sisi tumenawa huko ile station nyingine lakini tunamwambia mikono ni lazima na style kunawa after every hata kama ni 20 minutes na style ku, kunawa mikono so kazi yetu hapa sana ni kuhimiza watu waweze kunawa mikono na tuweze kutunza usafi so, yeah actually our response in Kibera is uh, informed by the need in in Kibera because uh, Kibera is a, an informal settlement with the uh, uh, UN Habitat estimates that there is close to 700,000 people in Kibera. Other studies put it at around 1 million or more in a, a 2.5 square kilometer area. That is very high population density. So given the current uh, pandemic, it is a very high risk areas. There's a lot of challenges when it comes to um, amenities, water supply and uh, other different challenges. And the community also have uh, pre-existing uh, con vulnerability conditions, they are already food insecure, so there is just so much in terms of uh, the challenges in Kibera. The, 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 the biggest challenge being the water supply system in Kibera. So that is why we chose to come and do this intervention in this area. Another thing also which we also did was to use the network of our volunteers also because they come from the same village, the same area, now they know a person who is really in need more, so those with persons with disability or chronically ill, so that also helped us. And then the last group was now the groups which are dealing either with persons with disability or groups which are dealing with, uh, with uh, people with different challenges, yes. Now those groups also to help us identify. And then now through that, after verification, now we ended up having now the real people who are in need. Kukana majirani ni metengwa. Nimetengwa ndiyo sababu nimepewa hii nyumba ya mwisho. Yu mtoto ni mlemavu anaribu vitu. Nyumba inanyesha kwangu. Sasa nimewekwa tu huku nikae na mtoto huku mwisho. Mtoto hizi fika huko. Yu ya kuaribu vitu za watu. 
Sada ikipatikana siwezi enda juu ananiambia nimezaa mtoto mwenda zimu. Sasa wa mananga saya kuniambia chochote. Sasa mina kufanga tu vile mimi niko na watoto wangu. Hile naitaji sana ni chakula vile watoto wangu anaweza kula juu mtoto ako na shida hizi kanja hiyo gonjo yake akikanja ni kulia usiku yote sasa sina amani na mali naishi pia nyumba niko nayo kidogo mtoto hezi cheza inabidi tu nazunguka na yeye nafasi pia nilinyang'anywa jirani alijenga mpaka huko sasa niko na shida mpaka na nyumba pia inanyesha kama ikianza kunyesha na amsha tu watoto tunaweka mabisheni jua kuna vile tunaweza lala sasa ni chakula tu na mali pa kuishi ndio shida Adra has been able to reach to a number of people here in Kibera slum but from our walk through the slum we realized one thing that came out clearly the need is great sharing with one of the beneficiaries Judith who received a shopping voucher and some personal effects we came to a conclusion that more efforts have to be put to be able to meet to the needs of the people here in Kibera uh, what I'll say the need is still large what you are able to do you are only supporting a number which was small compared to the, the kind of people who are still in need. So my message to them is, still the door is wide open, yes, for more support to enable us or them reach the people who are really in, who are really in need. And so ADRA in that uh, modality responds to everybody who is in need. It may be in some countries that we are working with Muslims or Buddhists or communists. Here in Kenya, we may be working with Christians. We may be working with Seventh-day Adventist Christians. We may be working with Muslims. Whatever the community has as their identifier is not relevant to us. What is important is if they are in need and if they are willing to partner with us to make a better life. Supporting Adra Kenya we look for your donations through Mpesa on our website. At the bottom of the screen, you will see uh, listed our website, adrakenya.org, not too hard to forget. And uh, also our social media contacts will be at the bottom of the screen. You can go there and click on and find the quickest way to provide support. And of course, our website and our social media will also list uh, how you can make a contribution through Mpesa or any of the other means that are at your disposal. In many ways, Kenya is very blessed in its strong community structures and in the responsibility that Kenyans sense for themselves, for their own people. I remember uh, being in Kenya just after the post-election violence in 2007-2008 and the leader of the Adventist Church told me, you know, we were responding to this crisis before you foreigners arrived. So uh, we take responsibility ourselves. And that is a tremendous thing. Uh, what we can perhaps learn uh, from some of our uh, other country partners is to make that support consistent and long-term, not just responding to today's uh, sad story, but how can I sign up to become a lifelong supporter of ADRA? Mm -hmm. I personally make a donation to ADRA every month. It goes out of my credit card. I don't even have to do it. It's automatic because I believe in ADRA, not just because I work in for it and with it, but because I believe ADRA around the world is making a positive difference. Do you know that every year ADRA is reaching approximately 20 million people around the world with its projects. That's about the same number as there are Seventh-day Adventists around the world. In other words, ADRA is probably the largest uh, evangelistic agency that this church has. Now, our responsibility is not to do baptisms. It is to reach out in the name of Jesus to make a difference for people. Other parts of the Seventh-day Adventist Church are responsible for teaching and baptizing and doing those things. And together, all these ministries, hospitals, clinics, ADRA, evangelistic schools, all of these come together to provide hope for those who don't have it.
This is just one of the cries that comes to us during this pandemic period. It's a time for you and me to respond. One, to the government's directive, so that you can be able to flatten the curb, or better yet, kick COVID-19 out of our society. Two, heed to this call. Be that one person who's going to be touched and send their donation to organizations that you know of that can be able to channel your funds to the people in this location, Kibera. Lastly, our country, Kenya, is waiting for you to be able to be the hope in this adversity. Be that one. Samuel Mangi, Hope Channel Kenya.